You might know him as the art of not giving a fuck guy, or the guy who Will Smith hired to write his book. But he started out as just a normal blogger trying to make it in the online business space. So here's how he made his rise. After reading the four hour work week, Mark decided to get into the blogging world and he built multiple content sites with the goal of collecting some sweet passive income as he lounged on the beach in Southeast Asia. And after two years on the grind, none of them worked out, except for this one blog on dating advice, which he grew to making about $1,500 per month. But it was only once he made a few key moves out of this that led to the Mark Manson that a lot of people know to this day, which if you don't know, he is the author of four books, three of which are New York Times bestsellers, and the first one, which he's best known for, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and that book was the catalyst that would lead to him co-authoring Will Smith's biography. Wanting to write a book for a lot of years, so Mark is helping me to extract the book from the plethora of experiences throwing his blog markmanson.net into a wildly successful blog and paid newsletter and releasing a feature film based on his first book. He's done a lot and he's achieved a lot and came from quite humble beginnings. And we actually interviewed Mark a couple of years ago on the Empire Flippers podcast where he talks about his start and his journey, which I'll link to in the show notes. But I want to quickly highlight three major decisions that I think were the pivotal moments in Mark's journey that led to his ascension where he is now and these are decisions I've seen with other successful online business owners, both on the Empire Flippers Marketplace and those who I've featured on the YouTube channel. And these are three decisions that you can also make with your own business. So the first point is starting niche or specific but having a pathway for going broad. So after failing at getting multiple blogs off the ground, the one that stuck was a blog in the pickup artist community on dating advice. Now his core philosophy that became the main content of his blog was less about pickup tips and more about being a put together person who someone would want to date. In fact, this was the premise of his first book, Models Attract Women Through Honesty. And from talking about dealing with self-confidence, emotional issues, and more core personal issues, he found that he was teaching essentially self-help for becoming a better person and not just dating. And so he decided to broaden his niche to that of general self-help, which he featured on the blog markmanson.net. Now, I think this was the first first pivotal decision that gave rise to really everything that would follow. He went into something that could enter a larger market where he became relevant to men, women, younger and older people. I mean, could you imagine if Mark Manson decided to stay a blogger in the dating industry, just how different his reach and his impact would have been? But I think it was really important that he started in a smaller niche because it helped him to understand and build an audience with a specific pain point and develop his ability to articulate solutions and just as importantly, to find his voice. So let's talk about finding his voice. I think this last part is very important to note as far as the success of Mark Manson's brand, just given how important I think vulgarity was in gaining recognition. But I think this applies to anyone who's in the content space because creating content is very much a journey where you learn about your communication style and how to speak with your personality. You don't need to be brash and vulgar, but you do need to be relatable in order to connect with your audience. Because if you can't connect with an audience, do you even have an audience? And if you don't have your own voice with your content, yet that's actually pretty natural. I think it's a skill like any other that requires practice, creating content and learning about how to be yourself essentially while understanding the right way to convey that on a public stage. I think Mark's willingness to be unabashedly himself while articulating more complex thoughts in his writing is what ultimately attracted his core audience and I think is what put him on the map in the form of his books. So that leads to the next phase of Mark Manson, which was amassing his subscriber base and the move that I think changed it all for him. So this is about utilizing your content platform as a launching pad for your own product. I was subscribed to Mark's email newsletter for his blog maybe a year prior to launching his first book, which was The Subtle Art, and it was really cool thinking back on it now to, to just watch everything leading up to the launch and then the transformation of his person and his career as a result of launching that book just seeing both the side of mark the relatively obscure blogger to mark the new york times best-selling author the launch of this product i think was the next pivotal decision to mark's next ascension from being a self-help blogger to someone now known more mainstream on one side i could see how instrumental his initial audience from his blog was in the launch of that book they were his initial customers they were his reviewers his evangelists and it's what helped launch it into mainstream success 
And then the book is what turned Mark's brand and blog into a highly successful paid subscription business. All to say, building a blog, a YouTube channel, or even a social media following can become a very powerful launching pad for relevant products, and the two can have synergistic effects. In the online M&A world, we call this the bolt-on acquisition strategy, where if you own a content site, you can buy an e-commerce business, for example, on Empire Flippers, and then promote that e-commerce business on the content site, or vice versa, where you own a physical product and you buy a content site in that same niche to drive traffic to that product. But going back to Mark, he didn't just sell any book within the self-help space. He instead created a new category altogether. And I think this is the final step that truly made all the difference. So the third step is creating your own category. This is something kind of echoed in certain parts of the internet. And I think the first person I heard talk about this was Tim Ferriss, who said that Creating your own category is much more fun and potentially more profitable than making just slightly better iterations in a pre-existing category. Then you have Peter Thiel, billionaire co-founder of PayPal, Palantir, talking about how competition is for losers. So this is just one camp of thought and it kind of is a polarizing thought. There are others who believe, for example, that the less risky way to build their business is to iterate off of what's currently working in an existing market. In the e-commerce context, this is like an inventing a unique product and putting it on Amazon versus creating something that's similar to other products already selling on Amazon. But perhaps it's like an eco-friendly material or something that's just marginally better. The risk or the, I guess, the consideration of creating your own category or inventing your own product is that the product is untested in the market and may require educating your audience to purchase your solution over others. However, the benefit of being a category leader, if you do this right, is that you're branded as the solution in that new exciting category and you can reap some major sales as a result. And I think Mark shows that you can create your own category within a market that is already tested. You can still go adjacent while being seen as refreshingly new and unique within that large and sometimes monotone industry. And this is what you're seeing in Mark's blog and books. This is where he became that self-acclaimed self-help writer for people who don't like self-help. On my 20 20th birthday, I got piss drunk and started peeing on some old lady's lawn. Cops rolled up. You're disgusting. And despite being underage and completely inebriated, I somehow talked my way out of it. I guess you could say my 20s started out with a bang. He took the risk to be edgy and real with his language and perspective on self-help, and it was welcomed by readers and stood out in bookstores. So much so that you've seen waves of people in the industry essentially borrowing his edginess using the word un in their own books or YouTube video titles or children's breakfast cereals. All right, just kidding about that last one. But he was the one to take the initial risk outside of the normal polished conventions. And in doing so, he branded himself as the name in this category, making him the person that is sought by celebrities, enabling him to make a feature film and build a very successful business. So if this applies to you in your own journey, you can consider starting very niche, but have a pathway for going broad in your niche, viewing your content as launch pads for selling products and thinking about opportunities to create your own category to stand out in a noisy space. If you do this successfully, it can lead to a very successful business and potentially a very lucrative exit on Empire Flippers. Now, this is all easy to analyze looking retrospectively, but it's much different moving forward into the unknown, which is the situation you're probably in. And I think the best way to do that is to study others before you and, and pay attention to what is going on in the world now. And a way you can do that for free is through our weekly email newsletter, This Week in m and which features the biggest events and businesses to pay attention to in the online business world. So I'll leave a link to subscribe below. And if you're interested in Nick D on how as an independent artist, he applies digital marketing concepts to make close to $100,000 per month from his music and how you could apply this to your own business. Click on the video here if that's something you're interested in. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.